What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Fireside Giants. I'm your host, Anthony Rovardo, joined by my co-host, Alex Wilson. And Kayvon Thibodeau is not a bust, guys. If you were calling him a bust in the first couple weeks of the season, I bet you're eating your words now because Kayvon Thibodeau with 10.5 sacks on the year currently, the first pass rusher ever under Wink Martindale to hit double-digit sacks. He's been playing some really great football. I re-watched the highlights to this week's game versus the Commanders last night. And man, let me tell you, Kayvon Thibodeau was popping up everywhere. Like he was constantly in the face of Sam Howell. He was pressuring the quarterback constantly. He made a few stops in the running game as well. His motor never ran out. You could see him just every single play running all the way through, through the whistle. And of course, those two sacks really stand out. And really this season, he has been one of the few standouts for the New York Giants. It's been a bad year. We're three and eight. We're staring down a top 10 draft pick once again. It stinks. But Kayvon Thibodeau has been a silver lining of this season. His breakout, his second season, I thought he was great as a rookie. A lot of room for improvement. We've seen a lot of improvement this year in his second season. So we're going to go ahead and just talk about Kayvon Thibodeau and the season that he's had, kind of recap and review it, you know, because again, entering the beginning of portion of this season, we heard a lot of that bust talk. There was a few guys who made some headlines on WFAN really criticizing Kayvon Thibodeau. Again, those guys are definitely eating their words at this point. Kayvon Thibodeau seemingly silencing the doubters. Hasn't been perfect for him, but it has been a really good positive second season for Kayvon Thibodeau. So we're just going to go ahead and discuss him and discuss why we are thankful for him on this Thanksgiving week. Of course, make sure you like if you do enjoy this episode, subscribe to the channel if you are new, ring the bell so you don't miss an episode, comment your thoughts on the topic down below in the comment section. If you listen on Apple or Spotify, please make sure to leave us a five-star review. Go ahead and follow us on all of our social media channels at Fireside Giants. But without further ado, Alex, how are you doing today, my friend? And how are you feeling about the way that Kayvon Thibodeau has performed this season? I'm doing great, man. And and look, I, I think that uh, we said it best a couple of weeks ago when people were calling for his head. This is ridiculous. Kevon Thibodeau is a second year player. He's healthy and he's got that elite upside. Now, here's the difference between like a guy like Kevon Thibodeau and Evan Neal. We haven't seen the glimpses. We haven't seen the flashes of elite talent from Evan Neal. We know he's he's got the talent. We just haven't seen it at the NFL level. We've seen the flashes of elite talent from Kayvon Thibodeau. We know he can do it. It's just about how consistent he can do it and how consistent he does do it on the football field. Now, ever since uh, you know that WFAN report came out and you know they trashed him and they you know kind of like took some unnecessary shots at the guy. I mean, for goodness sake, he's a second year player. It's ridiculous. Like some people don't blossom in their until the third, fourth seasons in the NFL. Ask Eli Manning. You know what I mean? Like ask some of these guys. Like. It takes years sometimes to really get going, and especially in a Wink Martindale scheme that was dropping Kayvon Thibodeau into coverage where he should definitely not be. They've done a lot less of that recently, more so letting him build his pass rush, build his sequence, and utilize that consistency to his advantage. Now, Kayvon Thibodeau this season, 32 pressures, as you referenced, 10 and a half sacks. BFF has him at 11 sacks, um, 13 tackles, 20 stops in the run game. He's been really, really solid for the most part as a pass rusher, some really great grades. Um, you know, he's had some really good games. I mean, he had a season high eight pressures against Washington this past weekend. I mean, for goodness sake, I know I think Pat Leonard reported uh, Kayvon Thibodeau went up to Charles Leno, their left tackle at halftime and told him, thanks, man. And he's like, what are you talking about? He's like, thanks for giving me my 10th sack. And he, <laughs> in the next half, he goes out and, and gets a couple of sacks and, uh, uh, you know, gets gets the double digits for the first time in his career. So now, you know, you're seeing that yeah, confidence, man. And I think that what I love about Kayvon Thibodeau is that he heard the rumors, he heard the noise, he heard the criticism, and instead of cowering, instead of walking away, instead of hiding from it, he went out and showed that he doesn't have to talk about it. He doesn't have to trash somebody on social media. He doesn't have to go. And I, you know what? I, you know what I really think made an impact here. I actually think guys like Carl Banks helped him along the way. Because I know like Carl Banks talks to him. I know like Michael Strahan talks to him. Uh, I think Strahan's a big, a big advocate for Kayvon and obviously one of his mentors. And I think those like veteran guys from the Giants probably went up to Kayvon and said, this is what playing in New York is like. You know, you're going to get this negative criticism. You're going to get this hostility. You're going to get this bus narrative. You're going to be torn to shreds. But the best way to respond to this is to do it on the football field. If you yell at them, if you curse at them, if you go to social media to take shots at them, you're only going to make yourself look like the villain. You're only going to make yourself look like a victim. Instead, you want to be the bigger man. You want to stay silent and let your actions prove your worth. Kayvon Thibodeau responded by performing excellent on the football field. He responded by getting his double-digit sack in week 11. He responded by having eight pressures against Washington and helping uh, fuel that six-turnover performance because there's so much pressure on Sam Howell. You know what I mean? Like, that is the sign of a good developing player. And for what it's worth, guys, remember before the draft when people were talking about Kayvon Thibodeau being lazy? People were talking about Kayvon Thibodeau having a bad personality, talking about how awful he was and how he was going to be terrible because of this— 
they're saying the same thing about Caleb Williams right now. You know what I mean? They're saying the same thing about his character, saying the same thing about his personality. He cares too much. I've seen Kayvon Thibodeau cry on the football field. I know you guys have too. He cried last year. Does anyone give a crap? No, because he's a good freaking player for the New York Giants. So stop using those those kind of bullshit excuses to tear down players and recognize the fact that if they help you win games, nobody cares. Kayvon Thibodeau is far from a bust. In fact, he's one of our best players right now. And I actually think that his future is so bright that we should not be sitting here talking about what he hasn't done. But let's talk about what he has done. You know, being a great pass rusher. And he's been going and doing uh, community service in New York and helping give back to the community and people that are struggling in the area. This guy has become... What someone who had the red flags of a person with the lazy attitude, person that was over, you know, uh, he, you know, just kind of um, out there, and someone that was trying to use the spotlight to his advantage. Instead, he's performed. He's using the spotlight to help people. He's using the spotlight to give back to the community. So I think it's fair to say that we should hold back our judgment from people uh, before you actually see what they do at the next level. Hold back your judgment before you tear down someone's persona and character. You know what I mean? Like it's ridiculous that we have to say this in this day and age based on dumb rumors, videos that are taken out of context. So, you know, just want to put that out there, especially because the NFL draft is coming up and a lot of people are going to start pulling up red flags about players that are really talented, generational even, um, have really generational traits. I'm not going to say as full prospects, but traits that you know translate and and really just good people that are emotional, that care about winning. Let's not tear them down. You know, let, let's, let's, let's hype them up and give them the respect of actually wanting to win football games because you know what we haven't done a lot of in the New York Giants era in the last five, six, seven years? Win football games. You know what I mean? So I feel like maybe that's a good thing for the Giants to have players that actually care. Um, sorry for the little rant there, but it, I just wanted to spiral off of that Kayvon Thibodeau narrative because this is what people were saying about Kayvon and look what he's done for this team. You know, he's one of our best players on defense. He's giving back to the community and he's not using the limelight and the spotlight to actually support himself, but rather the things he's doing good in the community and to bring some love to this team instead of going out and, and trashing people on social media like people do to him. So that's, that's my rant. That's, that's over. Damn, Alex, you just went in, brother. I mean, you just got really passionate about it. I love it, though. I love that you're coming to the defense of Kayvon Thibodeau and really to all young players. And here's kind of what, where I'll build off of that and what I'll say. This is the reminder that we all need to hear. Kayvon Thibodeau is a 22-year-old kid, right? Like, I understand you get to the NFL. You got to grow up really fast. Like, you got to be mature. Listen, I'm a 22-year-old kid. I'm an idiot. Kayvon Thibodeau, he's a lot less of an idiot than I am, but he's still a 22-year-old kid, and he's going to make mistakes, and he's going to have his passion on his sleeve, right? Like, he's going to show his emotions more than a 30-year-old player. Like, we always look back on Eli Manning and how he was emotionless, right? And he didn't really, you know, let the media get to him, didn't let anything get to him, didn't use social media. Eli Manning grew up in a completely different generation, right? Like, we have to understand that this is a new generation of kids entering the NFL. They are kids. They are young guys. Like, I know a lot of kids this age because I am this age and a lot of them are way more emotional than guys like Kayvon Thibodeau and Caleb Williams they do a lot of other things that just the other generation like the old quarterbacks that we used to have they just weren't like that and so it's just different right like everything changes everything evolves and we got to evolve with it and guys like Kayvon Thibodeau young players they're gonna be passionate the guys like Caleb Williams I, I like that you brought that up I mean He's crying about losing a very important football game to him. I've seen a lot of kids this age cry for a whole lot less. Okay, I'm still hanging out with kids this age who are crying over arbitrary BS. Kayvon Thibodeau was passionate when he beat the Ravens, got that game winning sack. He cried tears of joy. He got clowned a little bit on social media. Who cares? We loved it. You know, I love seeing these players play with passion. And it, when he's 30 years old, is he still going to cry after he gets a game winning sack? No, but he's a young kid and he's growing and he's excited and he's playing with the passion that we need on this New York Giants team. I think that has been a criticism of certain players in recent years, right? Because we've kind of seen players should like kind of mail it in towards the end of the year, right? Like, not really care and not have that passion when this team is down and they're like in the gutters. But this football team that we're watching right now, this New York Giants team, they're really bad, like historically bad on offense. We all know that. The defense has had its historically bad moments as well, 640 yards against Dallas that they gave up. That was crazy. But they're still fighting really hard and playing with a lot of passion. Like this is a team that's still bought in and that really cares about trying to put its best foot forward, trying to put a winning product on the football field. They're failing to do so. But at least now they're starting to look like they're going to come they're going to be competitive for the rest of the year. And I do appreciate that because you only get to watch so many New York Giants games in your life. You want to see this team actually try, look good, and at least be competitive. Um, but listen, with Kayvon Thibodeau, we did hear all of those narratives coming out um, before the draft. And one thing that I'll say about them, I have a little working theory here. It's a conspiracy theory. 
maybe the Giants put those false narratives out there, right? Because when we when we were first talking about the NFL draft, we were saying Kayvon Thibodeau, we would love to have him with the fifth overall pick. No way he gets to us. He's probably going top three. Could even be the number one pick. We thought for a while that Kayvon Thibodeau could be the number one pick in the draft. He was such a good prospect uh, from a football standpoint. But then we heard all these rumors about, oh, his behavior, his attitude. Is that going to cause him to fall in the draft? And it kind of did. He fell to the fifth overall pick. And we heard all week leading up to the draft that the Giants weren't interested in Kayvon Thibodeau, that they had too many red flags on his character, and that they didn't want to draft him even if he did follow them at number five. And then he fell to them at number five, and the Giants went ahead and drafted him. So my little conspiracy theory here is that the Giants didn't really have any of these red flags and that they made up a bunch of these red flags to make sure that he would fall into their laps. And I think that would be a cool thing. I mean, listen, maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. Kayvon Thibodeau's a New York Giant. They're happy about it. I'm happy about it. That's all that we know. But when you look back on the way that he played at Oregon and the, and the kind of prospect that he was, he was a raw prospect. Like, he had a lot of athletic traits. He was a very good player, right? But there was still a lot of room for improvement and room for development. And that's kind of what I want to talk about next, Alex, is the room for improvement that we've seen um, from him and the way that he's actually improved on some of these skills like his hand fighting is so much better now. Last year, it was a lot of like one move, kind of rush through and hope to get to the quarterback. This year, you see him go out there with more of a plan on his pass rushing attacks, and he's got more counter moves in his bag, right? Like that's a very important thing for defensive linemen, for defensive ends, edge rushers. When you're rushing, um, when you're pass rushing and the offensive lineman gets their hands on you, how do you get their hands back off of you, right? Like what's your counter move to that? Because it's really a chess match. And that's why I was an advocate for letting him pass rush more frequently and stop dropping him in the coverage because you got to learn tendencies of all offensive lineman it's a real chess match between an offensive lineman and a defensive end and what I think we've seen from Kayvon Thibodeau is a lot of growth in that regard his hand fighting his counter moves all that stuff he's been really really impressive and it's amounted to of course the 10 and a half sacks this season and also 32 pressures I believe he had 40 last season so he's definitely on pace to shatter that number he'll be far above 40 this season he's already at 32 and he had eight this past week versus Washington so he's really hitting his stride if you remember last season last month of the year he was really hitting his stride as well so Alex what have you seen from Kayvon Thibodeau in year two that really shows you like drastic improvement from year one because I think there's a lot I think there's a lot of improvements that he's made but what really stands out to you that shows you like there's a lot of growth in this player and maybe he's not even close to hitting his ceiling just yet I mean he's not and I'll tell you one thing um in, in terms of where he could even improve, and that's the tackling department, has a 21.4% missed tackle rate that this year. So like, there's an area where I think improvements could be made, which will help him become a much uh, well-rounded player. It'll help him as a run stopper. It'll help him um, in a lot of areas in, in terms of just you know bringing co- the quarterback down, you know bringing a runner down, whatever it might be. So I think that there is an area, there's a lot for him to improve upon, which means like he's not even close to being the, the player he can be. But where he has improved from year one to year two, and you know, maybe goes under the radar, his mentality. You know what I mean? He was like 21 years old last year. You know what I mean? He was a literal kid last year. And this year, you see what you see what happened to him early on this season, completely destroyed by the media. And he didn't even answer. You know what I mean? He Instead, he went out and showed what he could do on the football field and bounced back in a way that everyone could see it and not hear it. And I think that really says a lot to me in terms of maturity. Um, players that are able to respond with good performance – are ones that can actually last, especially in New York. Think about all the guys that we ended up kicking out. I mean, we, we traded OBJ. You know, he could not handle the media here, and it was really unfortunate because I, I wish we didn't, you know, destroy this this kid's mental uh, state. And, you know, he obviously uh, freaked out a couple times, and then, you know, it just just kind of spiraled from there. And it was so unfortunate because he's one of the best talents we've had maybe in the history of this team. Um, and, and it's unfortunate to see him go in the direction. Now he's obviously much more mature, you know, having a good season with the Ravens. Um, you know, love OBJ, love, you know, what he's doing. So uh, definitely happy for him. But then you look at guys like Kayvon Thibodeau, and he could have easily gone down that path of being like really emotional and really uh, responsive and really critical. It could have easily happened, guys. We've seen it before. And instead he didn't do that. Instead he said, you know what? I am emotional. I am capable of getting angry, but I'm going to use that for fuel on the football field. That's translating into numbers. You know what I mean? He's always had the talent, but now he's got the motivation. And I think a player with motivation and talent is an unstoppable force. And Kayvon Thibodeau is learning how to fuel himself with that confidence, with that motivation, and make impact plays against impact teams. So I do believe um, he's becoming a cornerstone piece, if not already is a cornerstone piece on this club. But at the same time, 
as a pass rusher, you're seeing him develop his talents. You're seeing him develop a bull rush. You're seeing him use that speed off the edge, using different pass rush moves. He's not just becoming a better football player because of his mentality. He's becoming a better football player because he's adding new tools to the toolbox. You know, some of the pass rush moves we've seen this year with his feet, you see he's using like almost basketball concepts um, to get around guys. Like Charles Leno, there was one specific move he had. Where I mean, he used his feet so well. He di- he dipped inside and almost did a crossover and got around the edge. Um, Charles Leno trying to secure the interior and not let him beat him inside went a little bit too far inside, and he used that kind of swim swim move and just went right around him. And that speed and bend and athletic profile, he had the fastest get off um, this season. I think it was zero point six eight seconds, the fastest get off um, of his of his season this year. And like that's really exciting because you're seeing him set new personal records in areas that traditionally will translate to more pass rush numbers, quarterback hits, hurries, sacks, tackles for losses, all of the things that really matter for an edge rusher like this, an outside linebacker. He's showcasing the improvements in speed, the improvements in reaction timing. And those are all mental guys, all mental, you know, all those things are knowing the snap count, knowing what's coming, being prepared, these things are mentally prepared for and then translated into physical success. So I do believe that his mentality, his knowledge, his IQ have improved to a degree that is so much better than it was last year. Um, or even even if it's marginally better, it's, it's seemingly improved to me. And it's translating because he's got the physical tools to pair with it. So I do believe if he continues on this path, if he continues combining those two elements, he's going to become one of the best pass rushers in this league. And I do believe he has the talent to do that. He just needs to keep developing and keep himself motivated and confident. He's using this negative energy as fuel. And I hope he can continue finding ways to keep motivated. Because you like if you guys watch the Jordan, the Michael Jordan documentary, you know, watch Kobe Bryant, you watch Aaron Donald, these guys. They know how to keep themselves motivated. Anything. If someone says even something slightly like, oh, like you had a bad game last week or, oh, like, you know, you could have done that rep better. They use that as a way to attack. They find ways to be confident. Um, That is what great players do. They find reasons to be confident. They find reasons to dominate. And it really all comes down to the mental capacity uh, because we know they have the physical tools. So I do believe that Kayvon Thibodeau has a bright future ahead if he can maintain that mental um, kind of state of, of just elevated confidence. I agree with you there. It's like kind of like killer's mentality, right? Like silent assassin. I mean, he he talks his crap on the football field, but he pretty much leaves it there. Um, he had that moment last year with Jeff Saturday, interim head coach for the Indianapolis Colts, right? That that was a moment for Kayvon Thibodeau, but that was a learning moment for Kayvon Thibodeau as a 21-year-old rookie in the NFL. Probably not the best idea to send shots at somebody in the media when you're standing at your locker room. Like that wasn't his best moment, but he hasn't had a moment like that this season. I don't think he's going to have too many more of those going forward. Again, I think we're seeing a rise in his level of maturity. We're seeing him just improve as um, a player and improve in terms of his confidence and his mentality on and off the football field. And I think all of those things are super important. Like you mentioned at the beginning of this episode, he does a lot off the field in terms of um, service work and charity work. Like he's, he's just a good guy. And I really like Avon Tippett. I look up to him personally, even though he's only like four months older than me or something. <laughs> I look up to the guy and I, I really like um, the way that he plays football. And he's definitely one of my favorite New York Giants right now. He's one of the most exciting players that we have. And I think that his future is just so stupendously bright. I think that he's going to be a great player for the New York Giants for a very long time. And again, one of the things that encourages me into believing that is he's just getting better and better, like what we saw last year. And then all the improvements that we just got just discussed from this year. And there's still room for improvement. There's still things that he can do better. But what he's demonstrated so far is that he recognizes where he's weak and he improves on it. He practices it, he fixes it, and he just makes his game better and more complete. And I think he's going to continue to do that again, like I said, for a very long time for these New York Giants. And I think that he's really going to be a, a great player in the long run. And last thing that I'll say about kind of like the um, personality and all that kind of stuff, Giants fans, are we forgetting who the greatest pass rusher in the history of football is? Like it's Lawrence Taylor. That guy, if you want to talk about a player that was like a distraction or said a lot of things and the media and had a lot, a lot of bad moments, let's just call them bad moments. I mean, Lawrence Taylor is the poster child of that. And he's also the poster child of how to get after a quarterback, sack the quarterback, rush the passer, all that stuff. So, you know, if Kayvon Thibodeau has a couple moments where he's talking a lot of trash or he's getting a little bit excited or, you know, he's a, a little bit emotional, I'm okay with it. We've seen it work before, guys. I think all the best Giants pass rushers, I mean, Justin Tuck, I mean, he was a leader, but he was very vocal. He was vocal in a different way than Kayvon Thibodeau. Um, Osuman Yura had his fun moments. And uh, another thing that I'll say, Jason Pierre-Paul and Kayvon Thibodeau, their career starts are on very similar trajectories right now, and that's really exciting. If you look at the numbers, I think that Kayvon Thibodeau um, has the most sacks through his first however many career games played um, uh, in Giants history, and it's like 
a half a sack more than what JPP was. They're very, very similar numbers. And so if you all remember that 2011-12 New York Giants squad that won that Super Bowl, you remember how important it was to have that depth at that pass rusher position, which is another thing we should discuss in another episode. The Giants need more than just Kayvon Thibodeau on the edge. But you guys remember how important it is to have those edge rushers that can get after the quarterback and how exciting it is to have a young pass rushing talent like a JPP, like a Kayvon Thibodeau. I love it. I'm thrilled by it, and I'm really, really excited. Once the Giants get a little bit more pass rushing help around Kayvon, I think he's only going to elevate his game further and just be a really damn good player for the New York Giants. So, again, one of my favorite players, super excited by him. He's super young. He's still growing, and it's going to be really fun to watch him continue to grow and blossom into one of the premier pass rushers in the NFL, which statistically this season he already is with 10 and a half sacks. So, it's exciting stuff, but we want to hear how you guys are feeling about Kayvon Thibodeau and the season that he's been having. Of course, we'll continue to discuss him, break him down, maybe do some film breakdowns, all that fun stuff right here on Fireside Giants. Um, but that pretty much wraps this one up. So make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this episode. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Ring the bell so you don't miss an episode and comment your thoughts on the topic and on Kayvon Thibodeau down below in the comment section. If you listen on Apple or Spotify, please make sure to leave us a five-star review. And go ahead and follow us on all of our social media channels at Fireside Giants. But without further ado, we'll catch you on the next one. Have a good one, and let's go Giants. Thank you.